Hey, it's Cynthia with Believer's House, and I am sharing today on the topic of being an everyday disciple, being like Jesus in every day of life. And, you know, I struggled with the topic, um, should I really leave it everyday disciple or should I make it the modern day disciple? And so I just um, decided to just go ahead and um go with it um, the way that it is. So this particular teaching is um, going to be a series and I'm going to be sharing about what does it really mean to be a disciple of Jesus? What does it mean to be a disciple? Why should we care about being a disciple? Um, what does that look like? We know in scripture, we can see the 12 disciples. We can see uh, their life and um, how they walked and learned uh, from Jesus themselves. And then he commissioned them to go out and do the work um, that he did to continue what he was doing while he was on earth. And then also after his death and resurrection. He commissioned them to go and make disciples, to teach them to obey all that he had already commanded them. So I would love to have you join me as we, we go ahead and go through this study. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my screen and um, let's go ahead and get started. So again, our first um, topic we want to talk about or what we're going to be talking about in this study is being an everyday disciple, being a disciple every day. So I want to back up for a second in Hebrews chapter six, verses one through three and the NIV, I normally read out of the NIV. Let me go ahead. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab those because we're going to be doing uh, going through some scripture. It's very important that the things that we look at are based on scripture. And so uh, Hebrews chapter six, verses one through three. Again, I'm reading out of the NIV. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward into maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment and God permitting, we will do so. And so as we begin to talk about being an everyday disciple, what I'm talking about is moving on from the basics of what is considered Christianity. Unfortunately, so many of us today are stuck in the basics. We don't have the foundation of repentance. We don't know about the strength of repentance. We don't know what repentance brings. We don't know about the change that occurs because of uh, repentance. The acts that lead from, from uh, death to life, right? We, we are totally clueless about having faith in God and using our faith and how to obtain faith and where to go with faith and how to believe God in faith, right? Um, the instruction about cleansing rites, that was very important, integral in the New Testament times, uh, how what they learned about being the cleansing rite and how those now applied now the, that Jesus had came and, and rose from the dead and fulfilled all the, script, uh, the scriptures. We have so many people that are struggling with the doctrine of laying on of hands, which is just a basic um, elementary teaching of Jesus, right? And the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And so God permitting, we will do so. But we're going to move past those. I have those topics are available um, in other places, but we're going to move past those because I want to talk about this. And elementary teachings in Hebrews, it should be six, not 103. That should be six, uh, one through three. My zero is really should be a dash. Um, we're going to, we're not going to be talking about in this particular, uh, the focus, I guess, of this particular teaching is not the faith, repentance, cleansing, laying out of hands, resurrection of the dead or eternal judgment. Those according to the scripture are elementary teachings. We're going to be talking about what does it mean to be an everyday disciple, being like Jesus in everyday life, being that modern day 2023 disciple. And so um, according to uh, Hebrews uh, 6, 1 through one through three, we see that these are the, the elementary teaching. So we're going to be talking about becoming a disciple of Christ. 
What does it mean to be? What is a disciple? What does it to mean be mean as an everyday disciple? Not just a Sunday disciple, um, not just a Wednesday night disciple, but an everyday disciple. What does it mean in the modern day in 2023 to be a disciple of Christ? What are the habits of a disciple? What are the beliefs of a disciple? And what does it living like a disciple? What does it look like? So our goal, uh, we're going to be looking at the goal of, of a disciple is discipleship, is to become, uh, do it, be a person of study of the disciple. Uh, that's our goal. And then also to be a maker of disciples and to be a maker of disciples, we have to um, uh, operate in a function of discipleship. Uh, that sound may sound confusing, but stay with me here. So we're going to be talking about the cost of discipleship, um, the discipleship's uh, relationships with, with others and with God himself. And we're going to be talking about growing in discipleship. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 uh, through 14, the, the word tells us that we're to go from milk to meat. Verse 13, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and go there. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching of righteousness. And so we know that um, the elementary teachings and even the infant teachings, um, God is saying that he wants us to move from those places of being stuck as an infant, and not only just from an infant, but also from the elementary, a child, and moving on into discipleship with him. If we're stuck there, we're never going to advance the kingdom. And so verse 14 also says, but solid food is for the mature by who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So there's, there's just this one little aspect of this verse that I want to talk about in verse 14. It says, by constant use by constant use, they've trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So there's some effort involved and there's some repetitiveness involved when we're moving from milk to meat and from the elementary teachings into the maturity. But solid food into solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So being a disciple of uh, the Lord, um, we want to go back to the very beginning, even uh, in general Genesis. I know this is revelation, but let's think about Genesis. We had the creation of the earth, as you can see the illustration here, the, the, the earth was created in the garden and Everything was put in the earth and he looked at it and he said, it's good. It's very good. And we see that at the very beginning of um, the creation of our world. But we also know that God came and he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden every day. They were created for relationship with him. They were created to be ambassadors, to be managers, to be um, rulers over the earth that he created to subdue it there's actually that word subdue and to enlarge it i really believe god's purpose was for us to overtake the earth and make that garden bigger because god is one who adds to and he expands our boundaries he doesn't reduce that's the job of the enemy that's another teaching and we see from the very beginning god's purpose for humankind. And we see from the beginning of Genesis all the way through, through the book of Revelation, God's reaching out to mankind to have that relationship. That relationship occurs through discipleship. It, it occurs through being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we know at the end of the book here, we see in Revelation chapter four, verse 11, that the scripture tells us that you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. So we know from the beginning to the end, everything was created by God 
and it was created to give him honor and to give him glory and that they were created by him and they we have our being in him and so if we attempt to have a being uh, to uh, attempt to be without being in him we're less than what he intended for us um if we intend to fulfill our full potential, if we attend, if we um, if we want to complete the purpose for which we we were created, then we must enter into that disciple relationship, being a learner and being a student and being a follower of God himself. Now, I'm going to go back through the history of the Old Testament. We're going to start with Jesus, and we're going to talk about what is the difference between being a disciple and being a Christian. We have some scriptures here, Matthew uh, 4.19, and then also, also Matthew 28.18 through 20. So a disciple is someone who is following Jesus. They are a devotee of Jesus, someone being changed by Jesus and is committed to the mission of Jesus. Now, a Christian, um, really the word the Christian, it means Christ-like. So disciple, Christian, Christ-like, um, they, um, they're a lot the same, I guess I could say, but I want to use the term disciple because in Matthew 4.19, um, a disciple making is when we're entering into relationships to help people trust and follow Jesus. And we know in Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is the whole process from conversion through maturation and multiplication, right? Because Jesus tells us that's the great commission in, in which he tells us to go ye therefore and to make disciples, right? And we can see that. So what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower or a devotee and I could say, an, and a devotee of a teaching or a person. In Christianity, a disciple is a Christ follower. Now we can have disciples of lots of things. We can have a disciple of new age, a new age disciple. We can be a disciple, not we, but people can be a disciple of the Hindu gods. Um, Vishnu um, and all, all of the, 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 not the Hebrew, excuse me, the Hindu gods. Um, you can be a disciple or a person can be a disciple of Buddha. And, and we can be a, a disciple of um, the, uh, of, of the Mormon religion. We can be a disciple of the Hare Krishnas. We can be a disciple of Satan. So what is a disciple? is a disciple is a follower, and I should change that word from or, and a devotee to the teaching of a, uh, the teaching of a person or a, a system. So we know Christianity is really taken from the word Christian, which means to be Christ-like. So a follower, a Christian a disciple is a follower or a devotee, a devotee of Jesus. So we can follow someone and watch and not necessarily the reason why it's very important for me to, to really land on the word devotee is because we can be a follower of something uh, a hanger on, we might say in today's uh, vernacular, we can be a follower of, of Jesus, but it's a different thing when we become a devotee, you know, when we are devoted to who he is, to his teaching, a, devote, a devotion um, to me, and these are my definitions, you can, you're more than happy to add to these, and if you were in my study group, uh, in my home, we would be having this back and forth discussion. How would you define what is a disciple? How would you define a, a disciple of Jesus Christ? How would you define a person who is an everyday disciple being like Jesus in everyday life? What would it be like for you? How would you define? What would you look for? What would you think people should see in a person who is a modern day 2023 disciple of Jesus Christ? In my view, a disciple is devoted to the teaching of Jesus Christ. He is devoted to it. 
Now I am devoted to my husband. Um, there is no chance anywhere that I would be devoted to anyone else like I am my husband. I am devoted to him. He has no worry that my eye will stray or my hands or anything else will ever stray because I am devoted to him. I am devoted to my children. No other child is going to take the place of my children or my grandchildren. I am devoted to them. And I, within everything in my power, will do whatever I can to add to their happiness, to their peace, to their spiritual lives, to everything about them that I can. And so um, as a devotee, um, I am devoted to Jesus Christ. It is the same, actually even more so. He is first and forever in my life. I am devoted to what he would like to do in me. I trust him to the extent that he has complete full power to tell me what to do or not to do. I am devoted to him every day in 2023 to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I am a Christ follower, but I am also a devotee of Jesus Christ. So we know in the Greek, we have the word, and I'm going to probably slaughter this word, but I'm going to go ahead and attempt it. Mathetius. Mathetius, I assume. Um, anyway, it's, it's translated disciple in the English st uh, standard um, translation of the Greek, um, this word, Matthias, and its verb form, Matthio. Now, these and other related forms of the word had to do with being a pupil, you know, a student. So, you know, when we're devoted to someone and when we can add in the, the connotation of being a pupil or a student, we add another dimension because a student or a pupil is always someone who is learning. They're always coming back. They're always being tested to be promoted. They're always pushing in because they want more. There is a hunger there. A disciple is fundamentally a student. A disciple is a follower. Sometimes we use the word, and I really like this word because it has a connotation that we understand, an apprentice, being an apprentice of Jesus, because that adds another aspect. Not only we, we are not um, completely who he is, right? An apprentice, if I went to someone and they were a uh, apprentice goldsmith, they would be working under a goldsmith, right? But they would be learning the trade and they would be trustworthy in their trade, but they would also have a master who was over them, but they would be someone who was able to do much of the same and maybe even their output would really have the same kind of slant on it. For those who, uh, you know, are people who have learned to sew, uh, not me, well, I actually do know how to sew, but I don't enjoy it. Um, but those who have uh, that craftsmanship of being able to make crafts, and I mean, uh, really nice things, um, maybe they learned particular skill, think of painting, they may have learned under a master or another teacher. And so they take on a lot of the same mannerisms and the same habits of their teacher. I have been fortunate to be mentored by some very awesome uh, Christian uh, mentors in my life. Um, if you know me uh, well at all, if you've known me for many years, you know that I was very heavily discipled by uh, Bill Suddeth, Janet Suddeth, and Sue Mead, those um, who is now Sue Mead staff. But um, they have a, a very heavy presence, um, even in who I am today, even though I am still me. And you can tell there's a slight difference because there's my swing. But a lot of what I do, a lot of who I am, because very early in my ministry, I was mentored by them. And so if we take this whole thought of being a pupil and of being a student and, and being an apprentice, and we think of that in the manner of Jesus, that we should be progressing in a way that others can see the influence of Jesus in our life. They can see the outcome, the power, and that everything we do 
has that slant that it looks like Jesus. And as we progress, we become better and better and better, right? And being that disciple, that reflection of who he is, we become the apprentice of Jesus and we begin to encompass all that he was and is. So an everyday disciple, disciple includes the idea of being a learner who sits under a teacher or a teaching. And the goal is that they become like the teacher that they embody literally physically in their bodies the teaching of that teacher and that in that case of course Christ right that we embody who he is in our our physical bodies in the way that we react or the way we respond the way that we think the way that we touch the way that, that um uh, our, our purposes, our plans, um, our, our response, responses, our actions, our, um, our heart, our compassion, our, our power in our words, the reaching forth of our hands. Because we are sitting under the master, Jesus, and our goal is to become like him. Not just to sit and soak and soak and soak and soak and soak, but also to stand up and go out and reach with our hands and do as well. So the English word disciple comes from the late Latin word for pupil. So what does a disciple look like today? Well, I'm going to introduce seven aspects or seven qualities, I'm going to say, of what a disciple should look like today. I'm not going to go through each one of these eight steps. That's what we're going to be doing in this class. This is our introduction. And so we're going to be talking about what does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus, a Christian, um, a modern day 2023 disciple every day today. Well, that person uh, who is a mature disciple has a gospel saturated life. And what does that mean? It means that their, their identity is centered in the gospel and that their action is also centered in the gospel. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be tearing these apart and we're going to be interacting. What does that mean to have our identity centered in the gospel? What does it mean that our actions are centered in the gospel? Our second quality is we're going to be talking about having that connection to God, that connection through prayer, that connection through his word, and that connection through other disciplines, communion and baptism, and other forms of discipline that we should be embracing as a mature disciple. The third quality that we'll be talking about is the exhibits of the fruit of the spirit in our life, including sacrificial living, saturated living, saturated, right, in the things of the kingdom, gracious living and devoted living. Our fourth quality, it will be understanding the Bible and Christian theology, the old test, having an, uh, a literacy of the old and the new Testament, understanding them and overarching um, understanding of what they mean and what, how they connect together and how it connects with us today. That a mature disciple will have a growth and comprehension and they will also be dedicated to the study of the word. The fifth quality of a mature disciple is having a, a living missional, having a missional living attitude and philosophy, understanding the mission of Jesus and his incarnated posture. You're like, wow, those are pretty big words. Not here to discuss what those mean, but I believe that these eight qualities work together to form a mature disciple. Number six. Engaging others towards discipleship, helping non-believers become, come to know the Lord, right? Uh, a mature disciple is going to be engaging for discipleship and recreating themselves, helping non-believers come to know the Lord. And they're going to be engaging with believers and helping them move forward in their own discipleship. Quality number seven. 
a, a disciple is also within a community. They're in a local congregation and they have a commitment to that group and they have a commitment to allow them to talk into their life and not only to talk into their life, but to encourage growth and, and to uh, encourage uh, a deeper commitment to Christianity and to Jesus and to becoming a mature disciple. A modern day disciple, an everyday disciple, uh, a disciple that wants to be like Jesus in everyday life. The eighth quality I would say is a, as a disciple, a mature disciple is a person who um, is fulfilling God's call in their life. They have an understanding of gifts and roles and their calling, their own and those of others and how those work together. And uh, they're also uh, a mature disciple understands the importance of growing in their skill of their ministry and ministry skill. So I believe, and um, as you follow, we're going to be using some illustrations and it'll be like gears that'll all be working together. If we have gears, I don't know how much of you know about gears, it's they're this gear and this gear. And when they, they work together, they flow. But if you have a gear missing, you know, here, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. If a gear is missing, it gets messed up in the cock. And I think what happens so often is that we're missing one or two or three or four of these and we're centering more on one of these rather have rather having all of the eight working together in constant flow so that we can move um uh, forward in our own personal lives and also in the ministry of discipleship and being a modern day disciple so we know in Matthew 28, which I've already alluded to, alluded to once, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, we, we know the scripture, we call it the Great Commission. Uh, verse 18, I'm re again reading out of the NIV. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we know that this is his, com, com, his uh, the great commission. He said, as he was, you know, getting ready to leave us and, and go back to heaven and, and take his seat at the right hand of the Father, he said, I have, get, I have all authority. I'm giving it to you. Now, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Our first, our second step, go and make disciples. How well are we doing that? How well can we, are we doing at making a disciple? If we was to give it, be given a report card, how, what grade would we get? In order to make a disciple, we must be a disciple. In order to be a disciple, we must know what it means to be a disciple. And we can't be a Sunday disciple and make disciples. We have to be an everyday, being like Jesus, an everyday life, modern day, 2023 disciple in order to be what he wants us to be and to fill this great commission. So our group, Everyday Disciple, those of you, um, Believer's House, of those of you who live here in the Pace, uh, Pensacola, Milton uh, area, we would love to have you join us. We would love for you to come on Saturday evenings at 630 at our home and meet with us. If you are not in the Pace Pensacola, Milton area, and you're not able to join us, um, I will be releasing these teachings on our mobile app, uh, Believer's House mobile app, and um, I would love for you to go there and download that app. You can find that on the app store, and you can find that, just go there and look up Believer's House, and you'll find uh, the app. Download that. These teachings will be available there. There's also a community in which um, we're developing, in which we will be having a lot of discussion on that that you'll miss if you're not in don't have the mobile app. Also, once a uh, teaching gets added, you'll also get alerted as well. So everyday disciple, being like Jesus in everyday life, um, a believer's house, we'd love to have you join us. 
That's again, Believer's House. You can check out our website at uh, HTTPS or www, either way, believers.house. Now people get confused that the dot house, where's the dot com, where's the dot net, where's the dot org, that dot house is the end uh, that you need. So it's just believers.house, HTTPS, semicolon, forward slash, forward slash. If you remember, that makes me laugh because I'm thinking, remembering when I was in children's church, uh, teaching children's church and being at camp. And you would say HTTPS dot dot, and then it would be forward slash, forward slash, believers dot house. To download the app, mobile app, go to your mobile app store and just type in believers house and you'll be able to download that. I'd love to see you there. I'd love to see you at our home 630 on Saturday evening. We have some munchies to share first and then we start our group and there's a lot of conversation. We're very interactive in our groups and we would love to have you join us as we begin to dig into what does it really mean and how can we really be an everyday disciple of modern day 2023, everyday uh, following Jesus disciple. God bless you. I'm so glad um, that you joined me. And again, I would love to have um, you join me uh, live and in person, but if not, join me on the mobile app. God bless you. Have a fabulous day.